رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد ayahs number 33 and 34 we're now entering into a very long section by the way of surah ali imran this is going to go for several ayat so we're going to be studying this for for quite some time and this is an ayah of what you can refer to as biblical history so there's going to be references to characters individuals that are very important in the bible that are going to be talked about now in the quran the backdrop of these ayat from a historical point of view i've mentioned a few times that there was a delegation of christians that came from najran to engage with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and of course these are people that believe that they have the right scripture from allah an unadulterated uncorrupted scripture from allah and allah is going to correct their views and these ayat the, the section that we're dealing with is actually that direct engagement with that audience even though the ayat before were in a more subtle way Prepare, preparing them for this engagement now it's going to be very very direct it's also important to note that this section how how is it you know connected to what's come before it's often you know the the, the culmination of this section is going to be the struggle of isa alayhi salam everything that's being talked about culminates the the climax of it is really the engagement and the struggle and the mission of isa alayhi salam some have extrapolated from this that the notion the 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 the, the fundamental call of this surah is tawhid Like you know, Allah talked about La ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. You know, La ilaha illa huwa al aziz al hakim. And so, Tawheed, Tawheed, and now, now Tawheed in regards to Isa alayhi salam, you shouldn't have done shirk. It should have been he should have only been considered a messenger. I, though that argument has some merit, I don't see that that's uniquely the case in this surah. I do believe that what Allah azza wa jal has done here in the surah is something I mentioned in passing before. I'll reiterate now, is that Allah has superimposed. two enemies atop one another in other words the rabbis of bani israil that are in direct opposition to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have actually in a subtle way been compared to the rabbis of the israelites that were in direct opposition to isa alaihi salam and in doing so the struggle of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been juxtaposed has been made parallel with the struggle of isa alaihi salam and that's why you'll find actually later on faman ahassa isa minhum al kufr qala man ansari ila allah When Isa alayhi salam sensed disbelief from them, he said, who will be my aid, you know, uh, towards Allah. And in Surah Al-Saf, in another Surah of Qur'an, when it's it's a Surah of fighting in the path of Allah, uh, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi is calling you, in the, at the end of that Surah also, Allah makes reference to the example of, you know, the Hawariyeen, man ansari ila Allah, qala al-Hawariyuna, nahnu ansarullah. And that was also in context of the struggle of the Prophet himself. sallallahu alaihi wasallam in surah as-saff the same thing is going to happen here because literally in the battle of uhud because you know the, the the backdrop has to do with uhud also in the battle of uhud there's going to be a point where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was believed to have been killed he was he was hit hard he on the face and his face bled and he he passed out and he was unconscious and the rumor spread that he's been killed and after he got up literally people risked their lives to become a human shield for him right so they were the ansar of him in his cause of allah right so uh, and ready to sacrifice themselves for that purpose so this parallel is important because before the christians are told no 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 jesus is not the son of god he's just a messenger of god before that because you know that 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 idea that the christian has it's not an idea of logic it's not a philosophical idea it's they don't believe in that because they were rationally convinced of that notion they were they they fell in love with that idea because it's an emotional attachment and you know when you argue with someone rationally as opposed to when you argue with someone emotionally it's completely two different things you can get into an argument with your spouse your mother your you know a, a child or whatever let's say uh, with your mother you can win logically but you have lost emotionally your mother will say oh congratulations you win do you feel good about yourself winning a rational argument sometimes is the worst kind of loss It's the worst kind of loss. With the Israelites who were very keen on evidence, muhajja, fa in hajuka fa qul aslam tu wajhi alilla. When the when the argument was essentially fundamentally logical, rational, then you had to cut to the the heart of the problem. You had to go go after their evidences. Fa, you know, to be Torah, fatluha. Quran will say later on, bring Torah, read Torah. You think you have evidence? Go ahead and bring it. We we went through those ayat too. But with the Christians the idea is that of loyalty and love and you know the sacrifice of Jesus and the struggles that he made and that love and bond that they've created with him well 
Allah is using that love and bond, first of all, to empathize with the, the struggle of Isa alayhi salam, and then show that actually this messenger sallallahu alayhi is on the same side. Right? So it's a very soft approach to teaching that very hard lesson that he's not the son of God. Right? And it's, you'll notice also in these ayat, um, that Allah will not take a very aggressive stance until the very, very end. It's actually a very soft approach to get to that point. Right? So that's the, that's the other uh, interesting thing that's happening here. The, the, finally, I, I, I mentioned to you that a recurring theme that keeps, you know, coming back in this surah is consistency. The consistency of all revelation. The consistency of all, you know, the, the previous books. Islam has always been the same. Justice has always been the same. In the deen and Allah al-Islam, Allah has always testified that He stands by justice, meaning any prophet was given the same standards of justice. Now we're going to get to different prophets that the Bible considers different from Islam. It's not consistent from Islam. And Allah will show, no, they're also consistent. Not only has Allah always been the same and His sense of justice always been the same, not only has Allah's revelations always called for the same message, His messengers have also stood by the same things. And so He he iterates that. The other important thing for the, the Christians is lineage matters. In the Bible, lineage is a big thing. The chosen uh, uh, nations, nations that were blessed with, with, with revelation, with prophethood. You'll find, if you are a student of the Bible, that you'll find ex- you know, pages upon pages of lineages. Son of so-and-so, son of so-and-so, son of so-and-so. And this was important. Allah Azza wa draws on their sense of lineage and actually begins the discourse from there. And so he starts in Allah Astafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahima wa ala Imrana ala al Alameen. It's certainly Allah, He's the one who chose. He's the one who, you know, uh, did istifa. Well, I'll, I'll get to istifa in a second. I'll, I'll translate for now as just chose. He chose Adam alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, the family and the, the, the legacy, fa- family legacy of Ibrahim and the family legacy of Imran, ala Imran ala al Alameen. Al is not just family, that's Ahl. Al you think of as Long-standing legacy, dynasty even. Long-standing family names. Those become Al. And so you have Al Fir'aun. Because it's a, it's a dynasty. It's been going on for many, many generations. Here you have Ala Ibrahim, Ala Imran. Long-standing families. Names that have carried on for, for, for many generations. That's Ala Ibrahim and Ala Imran. Now, four names have been mentioned. Two individuals, Adam and Nuh. And then two family legacies, Ala Ibrahim and Ala Imran. What I'm going to do today is emphasize more Adam and Nuh السلام, because understanding Al Ibrahim and Al Imran is, a, is an in-depth study. That, that requires a, a, quite a bit of background. And of course, Imran was someone sort of alien to even the Sahaba. Many of them didn't know who Imran is. It's kind of a new name. Ibrahim has come up over and over again in Quran. Imran hasn't, right? Imran is not a name that's been emphasized. Imran is not a name that's been taught. We don't know who he is. We don't know anything about his life. Life and times, etc. So who is this? This is this is how the Khatibun Nas ala Qadri Uqulihim, people with Christian background, people with Jewish background will know who Imran is. For those of you who don't know who Imran is, I mean maybe your uncle's name is Imran, like I know who that is, but your who who actually is Imran is actually the father of Musa alayhi salam. The father of Musa alayhi salam, the father of Harun alayhi salam. His name they're the family of Imran. Okay. And that's an important thing to know that the legacy of Torah was given in the family of Imran. The legacy of Torah, because Imran had two sons, Harun and Musa, they're the original carriers of Torah, right? And then the family of Imran keeps getting the revelation until, the, the, meaning the, the affirmation, the confirmation of Torah until Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam is the last member of the family of Imran, along with, uh, by the way, his mother, Right, because she was part of that. Just like Harun and Musa are coupled together, and they're chosen as a family. Uh, you know, Isa alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam, and actually along alongside them, their mother, his mother, has also been chosen. Allah has chosen her. In Allah has tafaki wa tahharaki. Istifa is used for her also. So that that family of Imran that started there, the legacy ends here. So it's the start point and end point of that. Now Allah mentions Ali Imran, but he's not going to go into Musa and Harun now. He's going to go into Isa alayhi salam and Maryam salamun alayha, meaning where this legacy came to its culmination. Okay, uh, so we'll discuss that in in some more depth because there is also Western criticism of the use of Imran in the Quran, and you know maybe this is a historical mistake on behalf of the author of the Quran, etc. So we'll deal with some of that in some more depth tomorrow. But today I want to deal with the word istifa, 
and I want to deal with Adam and Nuh alayhim as salam and some, some lessons drawn from there. So the first thing about istifa, uh, there are a number of words in the Quran for choice or selection. Ijtiba is one of them, ikhtiyar is one of them, uh, istifa is one of them. So um, ikhtiyar comes from the word khair, when you choose something that is better, then you use khair, meaning something was lesser, something was better. And you see good in something, that's when you do ikhtiyar, ikhtartuka. Uh, this is the word used by Allah for Musa alayhi salam. Wa an akhtartuka fastami' lima yuha. Uh, ijtiba is used from jabu. Jabu actually means uh, tax collection. You don't collect tax from everyone, you collect it from people that are qualified. So when, you, when somebody meets certain requirements and then they're selected, that's actually called ijtiba. And from it you can you know, take like, you know, if, if there were five markers here and only one of them was working, I'd use that one, that would be ijtiba. Because I made the choice for the task at hand. This is the word that's used for the ummah. Huwa ijtabakum wa ma ja'ala alaykum fi dini min haraj. He's the one who did ijtiba of all of you. Meaning, every one of us was chosen to, to have the honor of saying La ilaha illallah not randomly, but because Allah sees something in us that should be put to work for this ummah, for, the, for his service. That's why he allowed us to become members of this ummah, huwa ijtabakum. The word that is at hand here is istifa. Uh, and istifa comes from safwa. Safwa means purity. Like uh, Urdu speakers know saf, shafaf. Okay? Or as safa. Safa also means purity with a sad. Okay? Uh, the word safwa suggests when a choice is made in which no one can question you except the one, question the one who made the choice. It's purely their own choice. Okay? So if um, I decide, for example, that, you know, I'm going to get a new phone, and they say, you want the black one or the white one? I say I want the black one. I don't have a logical explanation for why I want the black one. It is purely and entirely my choice that I want this one. That's called istifa. And you can't say, on what basis did you choose the black one? Why, what is the scientific rationale, the logical explanation, why you didn't choose the white? Well, according to physics, I like black. That's, it's my choice. That's it. You don't have any place, any room to question my choice. That would be called istifa. The istifa does not work in many choices in, in, in life. For example, if you're going to hire somebody, you, you can't do istifa. You can't just say, it's my choice, I picked this person. Well, you have to see qualifications, you have to do ijtiba. Or you have to do ikhtiyar, this is a better candidate than that one. You have to do ikhtiyar. Istifa is done when it's entirely up to you. And, you know, when it comes to us, sometimes we don't even know why we like a certain color, why we like a certain flavor. It's just, we're programmed that way. But when we're talking about Allah making a choice based on Safa, it actually means we, we, of course, all of His choices are based on wisdom, but we don't have any room to question why this one, why not that one? Because it's purely His choice. The implication of using the word istifa is that we do not decide. We don't decide who Allah chooses. This was important for the audience to hear because they believe Allah has already chosen and nobody else will be chosen. And the Prophet ﷺ should be dismissed because he can't possibly be chosen. Who are you to decide who Allah chooses and not chooses? You know? And you ahadum mithlama utitu. This is what the Israelites had a problem with. Uh, one of them, you know, uh, someone else was given what you were given? How can that be? You can't accept that. You know? And so Allah Azza wa explains in his own words, yes, he did in fact select certain individuals. And the first choice that he made was the choice of Adam. But that creates a logical problem. He's the only human being, how is he a choice? Right, choice is when you have a million to pick from and you pick one, that's a choice. But Adam salam is the only one there, so how is he a choice? Some have used this ayah to say, see, the Qur'an talks about evolution. Because it must have been a lot of pre-human, you know, some species, and of them Allah chose Adam salam and made him into human put his ruh in time, the rest of them did not have a ruh, etc. I cannot confirm or deny whether that's the case. I don't know, and I don't say that that's not possible. I don't say that's absolutely false. I just say that I don't see that the text and the original, original context of the text is going in that direction. There are classically, however, other ways of looking at this text. Allahu a'lam about the evolution argument. That's for Allah to know. And you know, for some people to theorize, that's, that's fine. That's just not my field. And I don't claim that everything that I share about the Qur'an um, that, that my background in the study of the Qur'an 
is the only background that you can approach the Qur'an with. Some people with a scientific background, an anthropological background, a sociological background may see things in Qur'an I don't see. Or even if they see it, I can't be convinced either way of it because that's not my area. Right? So I'm, I'm okay with accepting that. In any case, uh, the, the choice of Adam salam has been described classically in a number of ways. One obvious one is that Allah Azza wa Jal chose him over all of the angels. Right? And, and all of the jinn. He made a choice. And even the angels were kind of shocked by his choice. We're, we're, alternatives are available. نَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ we're already here, why are you choosing him? So that Allah, and Allah literally said, that's not for you to question. إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So that's perhaps an explanation of that choice. Allah Azza wa Jal chose the human race, and through the human race, He chose Adam alayhi salam by creating him. And that's, that's the reference that's being made. The special place of humanity itself, by saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمْ others, others have said that Allah, in alam al-arwah, Allah created all the ruh. All of the souls were created, and, uh, and one body was created. And of all of the souls that were created, Allah took one and put him inside of this body. You know, وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ مِنْ And if, if you look at ruh, is it some jinns? Of all the ruh that I have, that I possess, of them I picked one and put inside of him. So the other idea being that the soul of Adam a.s., the ruh of Adam a.s. was chosen over all others to start this humanity's legacy off. Okay. <coughs> The other is, of course, that Adam salam was sent to the earth. And when he was sent to the earth, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a special place. And to, you know, he didn't just leave him as a human being. Allah Azza wa Jal chose him to receive revelation also. He made the choice to reveal to him. And he, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ That Allah Azza wa Jal brought him into contact with words by means of which he could make tawbah. So this also is part of the implication of إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى Adam. Uh, so now from Adam alayhi salam, the journey of humanity starts and eventually the next main prophet that comes from the lineage of Adam alayhi salam, from humanity that's now starting to spread, there's a small community that's formed and in that community um, Allah, Allah chooses a man named Nuh alayhi salam. Wa Nuhan. So Nuh becomes a messenger. When Nuh alayhi salam becomes a messenger, he's, the, he's considered Adam al-Thani. Wa ja'allahum humul baqeen, Quran says. That his people... We made them the ones that ذُرِّيَتَهُ ذُرِّيَتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ We made his lineage the only ones that survive. Meaning when, when the flood came, in Surah Nuh I talked about this at length, Ibn Ashur discusses this, others, some have the image that the entire earth got flooded, that the entire planet was underwater when the flood of Nuh came. Well no, humanity hadn't spread all over the world yet. They were in a valley, all of humanity was just one town at the time, population is not much. And so yes, the population, much of the population of the, of the world drowned because they were all in one place. You know, and the ones that survived were the ones that were with Nuh salam and his offspring. And so that dhurriya are the only ones that survived and they're, we're, we're basically descendants of Nuh salam in that sense. Or Nuh salam or the, and those that were closest to him. He now says Allah chose Adam just like he chose Nuh salam. Basically Adam salam, the start of humanity, Nuh salam, the restart of humanity. Right, so it's, he's the second Adam. So in that sense, he's mentioned as the second universal messenger, Ali Sattu By mentioning these two messengers, is another beautiful implication is that Allah has always made choices that apply to all of humanity, even though messengers came to one particular nation at a time, and you know Allah sent in different towns, different prophets with different languages. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِمْ We never sent a messenger except in the language of their own people. So Allah always sent culturally specific, socially specific, regionally specific messengers. But He started this particular prayer, He started this prayer with, a, with two universal messengers. Everybody believes in Adam, He's father to all of humanity. Everybody, Nuh salam is a messenger, not just to His people, but actually, in a sense, all of humanity, because that's all humanity was. Right? So He started with the universals. And then, things got more specific. Of course, there are so many nations in the world. There are so many ethnicities in the world. Somebody some, one time asked me, what about Chinese prophets? What are, wh wh where are they mentioned in the Qur'an? What about the Australian prophets, Aborigines? Why aren't they in the Qur'an, etc., etc.? Allah may have given them prophethood, but a prophet that was given the legacy of prophethood, meaning in his descendants, prophets will come and prophets will come and prophets will come. That's what Allah decided to do with Ibrahim. 
So from Adam and Nuh, then you find Ala Ibrahim. Ala Ibrahim, the family and the family legacy of Ibrahim was also especially chosen. It is my reading of the Qur'an that this family choice that was made of Ibrahim salam is a result of the tests that he passed and the dua that he made. The dua that he made that from my ummah, from my children, there should be at least a, a, a Muslim ummah. And other place in the Qur'an, uh, other times he mentioned dua for all of his dhurriyah, not just the ones that he was building the Kaaba next to. You know, he included Ismail and Ishaq when he made that dua. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي He said, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي وَهَبَ لِي عَلَى الْكِبَرِ إِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقِ إِنَّ رَبِّي لَسَمِيعُ الدُّعَى رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي So he mentioned, you know, Ismail and Ishaq and then said, of my offspring, Ya Allah, make us those who establish prayer and those who inspire others to pray. And so Allah accepted that prayer and kept prophethood in that family and kept that going. By the way, that does not mean that no other family in the world or no other nation in the world receive prophets at the same time. It could very well be that in one corner of the world there's a prophet Allah chose, a messenger Allah chose for one nation, and somewhere else there's another messenger doing their work, completely un disconnected and doing their own work and uh, preaching their own message at the same exact time. But the point here being made is that this family kept getting messenger after messenger after messenger. Not at the exclusion of other nations. So Ala, you know, Ala Ibrahim. And then within Ala Ibrahim, by the time things got to um, Musa alayhi salam, by the time things got to Musa alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jal did something very special with them. Meaning when, when the time, when, by the time you reach the family of Imran, within the descendants of Ibrahim is the family of Imran. By the time you get to the family of Imran and Musa alayhi salam and the Torah being given, then Allah Azza wa Jalla describes kullama halaka nabiyun or the prophet describes kullama halaka nabiyun khalafa nabiyun that Allah Azza wa Jalla kept giving them prophet after prophet after prophet there was no generation without a prophet he kept continuously giving them prophets Allah says qaffayna ala atharihim bi rusulina in Quran we we gave them a continuous chain in their in their legacy with our messengers so the idea of taqfiya Meaning that the prophethood got, or the choice of Allah got concentrated particularly in the family of Imran. And so we're going from the most broad, Adam alayhi salam, to the second beginning of humanity, Nuh alayhi salam, to the family that was chosen, Ala Ibrahim. And within that family, the, the, the most concentrated choices, Ala Imran. But one does not negate the other. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is not Ala Imran. Our messenger is not Ali Imran. What we're going to learn in these ayat is where the legacy of Ali Imran came to an end. But that doesn't mean the legacy of Al Ibrahim came to an end. You see? So Ali Imran is going to get described and the Christian will understand, okay, yes, Ali Imran, the, the, the family legacy of the Torah and the confirmation and the affirmation of the Torah started with Musa alayhi salam and finally the one who was retaught the Torah and retaught the Torah with the addition of the Injil was Isa alayhi salam and that's it. That came to an end. And then from then on, it is the time for the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam to pick up that legacy from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. So that's the, that's sort of the, the framework with which these ayat are beginning. You'll notice when we get to the end of this entire long section, you'll notice all the way at the end, Adam alayhi salam will come up, come up again. Just like he came up in the beginning, all the way at the end of these, I consider this particular ayah, or these two ayah, ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضُ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ uh, Actually, I, I didn't uh, explain عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ yet, so I'll, I'll do that. And then ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضُ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ These are the opening parenthetical notes to this entire section. And then we get into the section. And just like there's an opening comment, there's going to be a closing comment in this discourse. And in the middle, you have all, uh, you know, all of the, the history that's necessary for our guidance. So, he says, عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Over other nations, over other peoples of the world. And alameen, some have included ذَوِي ukul because ina in the Arabic language can include human beings, angels, and jinn. Okay, so if that's the case, Adam alayhi salam makes sense. Allah chose him over, angel, over angels. Allah chose him over jinn. And then as time continued, Allah chose these families and these prophets over other nations. عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ With Nuh alayhi salam, of all of his nation, Allah chose him. And Allah chose him to, to, to carry that legacy. And then after that, 
uh, with Ibrahim alayhi salam, with everybody else around, Allah ex- exclusively chose him, chose him. Some have taken a so- somewhat weaker, I don't consider it as strong of an interpretation, but it's there, it's found, that Allah mentioned these four names because these are the people that were given victory. So, and they try to tie that with the, the promise of victory that's been given previously in the surah. سَتُغْلَبُونَ وَتُحْشَرُونَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَا وَبِئْسَ الْمِحَادِ and later on, أَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ You're going to be supreme if in fact you believe. So they hold the view that these were mentioned because these were given victory. I don't necessarily see that to be the case because a lot of the prophets of uh, Ali Imran were killed. You know, يَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ You know, Ibrahim alayhi salam was not necessarily given victory over a nation. He was just expelled from one nation after another. Um, so I wouldn't really count that as victory. Uh, you know, Nuh alayhi salam, you can maybe argue was given victory over the disbelievers, but even that was a tragic victory. He's crying over his son till the last moments. So, and with Adam alayhi salam, they say he was, then they try to add that he was given victory over shaitan. Um, kind of after a loss though, and I don't know if that's victory. But it was a, it was a, it was a trial, and it was a pretty tough trial, and you could even argue that, you know, فَأَزَلَّهُمَ shaitan shaitan caused them to slip. Both of them to slip. So I don't necessarily buy the victory argument so much, but I do say that the choice that Allah is mentioning here, Allah is essentially driving home the point that He's always been making choices. So the fact that this Prophet is chosen should not come as a surprise to you. Allah has always been sending revelation, so the fact that He sent Furqan is not a surprise to you. So this, the same way, the way He said, you know, نَزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَلِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَيْدِهِ وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَلِنْجِيلْ مِنْ قَبْلِ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَأَنزَلَ الْفُرْقَانِ the same way now in Allah Astafa Adam wa Nuhan wa Ala Ibrahim wa Ala Imran Al Alameen. He kept making all those choices one after the other after the other. Dhuriyatam Ba'buha min Ba'd. They're all offspring one of the other. They are one continuous, you know, uh, family legacy. Starting what with uh, Adam alayhi salam. In a very subtle, crafty way, the Quran has just now undermined the divinity of Jesus. Why? Because the family of Imran, from whom Jesus eventually comes, Isa eventually comes, is just a child of Imran, who is a child of Ibrahim, who is a child of Nuh, who is a child of Adam. So they're just children of each other. And in saying so, and you know, the Christian wouldn't even think this is a theological problem. Of course, yes, they're children of each other. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Wallahu sami'un alim, and Allah hears every, Allah, and Allah hears everything knows everything. And this the, 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 the munasabah, the correlation of Allah's two names here, that Allah hears everything, knows everything, is important because, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal with uh, Adam alayhi salam told them, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ And whenever guidance comes to you from me, Adam was told, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear, no grief on them. And those, the, those uh, the, the original you know, message that was given to um, to Adam alayhi salam. Wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. Those words Allah heard. We human beings are going to need forgiveness, and the only way they'll get it is through guidance. Those words Allah heard that so many thousands of years ago, Ibrahim alayhi salam made du'a about his children. Allah says, Allah is listening. I actually tend to think that the words Wallahu sami'un alim are closer to the words of Ibrahim alayhi salam here. They're closer to the words of Ibrahim alayhi salam because the family tree of prophethood starts with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Really, that's why Al starts with Ibrahim. Al Ibrahim, Al Imran. And that's when, and, and if you study Quran, you find he's making dua to Allah and he's actually saying, Inna ka anta sami'u, Rabbana taqabal minna, Inna ka anta as-sami'u alim, Inna hu lasami'u dua You know, when he talked about his children, he said, Allah listens to the dua. Allah, you know, he, he relegates that to Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's actually Allah saying, Allah has always listened, meaning Allah answered those prayers. Those prayers did not go unanswered, and nobody had known about those prayers. Nobody documented them, only Allah knew about them. They were made in the absolute solitude with just two of his children and nobody else around, and yet Allah knew all along. Wallahu sami'un alim. So from within that, now we're going to get to the, the, the wife of Imran. I'll make one comment and we're done for the day, inshallah. This is the opening of the, the, uh, the 30, 30, fourth ayah or thirty fifth ayah, even though I'm gonna go back and discuss Ali Ibrahim and Ali Imran in, in some depth tomorrow, inshallah. But I'll just say one thing for now. So Imran is considered the father of um, Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam. Okay? 
from the biblical accounts, that's his name. And here you find him to be the father of Maryam. Which is why Western critics looked at this and said, this is clearly a mistake in the Qur'an. And another mistake that the Qur'an seems to have made, Ma'adullah, is regards to Maryam. They confuse Maryam with Miriam. Miriam is the sister of Harun. You know, the, the sister who ran after Musa behind the basket? Her name is Miriam. And so, when, you know, when Mary came back with Jesus, when Maryam came back with Isa, the baby, and they were like, what have you done? They said, Ya Ukhta Harun. Quran says, Ya Ukhta Harun. Sister of Harun. And they said, well, clearly Quran's confused that they th- the Quran thinks that this is a sibling of, of Harun alayhi salam. Even though this is generations later, this is the story of Jesus. This is with, you know, you know a millennia later. So how are they confusing these, the Qur'an's confusing these two things. Take a step back and appreciate something. Let's talk about Ukhta Harun first, then you'll understand this. That's an easier case to explain, and under, an important one to understand, then you'll appreciate this. Maryam Salamun Alayha was chosen to be the, you know, to, to stay in the masjid, in Atikaf, permanently. And she was given the custodianship of that, uh, you know, uh, by her uncle. You know, Zakaria alayhi salam, the arrows were drawn and this was an exceptional thing. Women did not stay in the masjid. Women were, and that's why when the mother who was about to, you know, was carrying her, uh, was praying and we're going to see that prayer, I want to dedicate this child of mine to Allah's service. And she assumed it's going to be a boy who's going to recite, memorize Torah, teach in the masjid, lead the prayers, you know, serve and worship. And she had a girl. But the exception was made. And everybody accepted the exception. Allah put barakah in this family that even though, can you imagine nowadays that somebody is, uh, there's a special room made for a sister in the masjid that she's just going to worship. Like that. It doesn't sit well with the, is that, is that okay? Is that even halal? What's going on here? So they had the same reservations, but Allah put this qubul in all of them. And which is why Allah said, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِي it's not that Allah accepted her, but when Allah accepts someone, everybody accepts them. So this exception was made, and she got accepted, literally with the other spelling, into the house of Allah, she gets to stay there. She's doing, she, and she's supporting the teachings of Torah. Because Torah is the book of Allah at the time. She's learning Torah, teaching Torah, she's carrying the legacy of Musa a.s. She's supporting the legacy of Musa a.s. like once Harun did. So Harun salam's name, Harun is the backbone of Musa salam. In any generation, someone who re-revives the legacy of Musa salam is considered a Harun. They're considered a Harun. Well, actually not literally a Harun, a brother of Harun. Meaning, they have the same camaraderie with, with Harun. They're doing what Harun once did. When you consider yourself the brother of someone, basically, you know, it's the brother in cause, brother in arms, Right? So when they call her sister of Harun, they're saying, one of the direct meanings is, you play the role that Harun once played. You were the Harun of our time. How could you do this? How could you have done this? Ya Ukhta Harun. So there's a juxtaposition. And by the way, the, the beauty of it is, her name is very similar to literally the sister of Harun. Like you should have been like Miriam. You should have been like, why are you like this? And so what, what happens in Semitic culture is that you call someone as though they remind you of someone generations ago. Okay? And you are, you are, you are saying you're just that legacy restored, revived, relived. That's what you are. You are the Harun of our time. You are the medium of our time. Okay? That's the, that's a, it's a very beautiful literary thing to say. Nowadays we don't speak in that kind of language. We just say you remind me of, you, of your grandpa or something. But we don't literally say the name, you know? Or you don't call, especially you don't call him brother of. She, she didn't say, excuse me, that's not, I'm not the sister of Harun. I'm actually the great, 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 great granddaughter of Harun. How are you calling me a sister? We're not even the same age. No, that's not what that means. So now, the family of Imran. The family of Imran. Imran is the father of Musa and Harun. And it is as though, just like his children were chosen, this woman's about to give birth, and she's about to have Maryam, and Allah Azza wa says, it's Imran all over again. 
This is where the family legacy began. It's coming in. There's a juxtaposition of the two. It's a, it's, it's Imran's family and restored. So even, I would argue, literally, his main, his name may not be Imran. Her husband's literal name may not be Imran. But he is playing the role that once Imran's family played. That's why his name is being used here. And that was important because this is the final chapter in restoring the legacy of the family of Imran. This is it. There's no more continuation of the legacy of Imran's family, meaning the legacy of the Torah. Okay, so that's why those two names are juxtaposed on top of each other. إِذْ قَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةُ Imran. Okay, so we'll talk about that in some more depth inshallah ta'ala tomorrow. There's some very interesting research papers. I'll cite them um, and I'll mention them for your own reading. Uh, I'll, I'll share that bibliography with you tomorrow also. Barakallahu li walakum fil Quran al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.